Welcome back. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy here for The Daily Blob, where yet again we are going to be shilling for the China Man because that is who I am. I am a China Man shill. Anyways, I do think it's funny. I think it's funny I get that in the comment section. God bless. God bless. They put it in the comment section as an alpha chad should, right? Anyways, I look down the comment section so many times when I talk about what China is doing with artificial intelligence and I see all this stuff about me being a shill. And it's more like I just kind of laugh and I'm like, I don't, I don't know what to say. I would just like my country to stop committing industrial suicide. <laughs> that would be ever so lovely. I don't think people really grasp what the hell is going on, right? When we have Lutnik come out and he's talking about weak European beef compared to strong American beef, I just... I just don't have a lot of confidence in our economic policies. And I don't know, maybe one Republican out there wants to stop being a fucking welfare queen for half a second and actually do their job in Congress and realize our current AI policies towards China is probably going to kick ourselves in the nuts. But anyways, what do I know? I've just been doing technology for 30 years and see, seen all of this stuff happen. Uh, so anyways, uh, this is kind of interesting. Alibaba. Alibaba is coming out with a new AI chip. <gasps> what does this actually mean? Uh, it means a lot. And it also means a little. I think it's interesting to, to take a look at. Uh, Alibaba's AI chip, a big deal. So I've talked about this with uh, China's AI technology. So yesterday I did a video talking about Huawei, Huawei coming up uh, with different uh, storage solutions. So basically trying to optimize uh, storage uh, for AI platforms. Uh, the largest uh, storage drive out there, apparently. They say they have the fastest storage drive out there. Uh, so they're doing that. Uh, they also came up with a unified communications management system. Anyways, they came up with, a, with a, an AI or a, a piece of software for AI systems to determine uh, what, which basically storage or memory uh, would be most appropriate for specific applications. Uh, so that's one of the things uh, that Huawei is doing. I think it's kind of interesting to see uh, where uh, China is going with their AI technology and also seeing how, how our our technology is 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 diverging, right? We we've had this Wintel, the, the idea of a Wintel duopoly for a long time. Fuck me. 30, 30 plus years, right? Intel, more or less, x86 processors, more or less, uh, are the CPUs, and the, the, the processing architecture that we use. And uh, Windows, or something like Windows, is the operating system that we use, like Linux, but whatever. Uh, and basically, we've had, we've had this one, uh, one set of systems, and basically it's been pushed by, by the Western world, right? You don't, you don't hear about the Russian uh, uh, computer architecture, right? Right? You just don't hear about that kind of thing. It's all, it's all so uh, Western-centric. And so what's kind of curious now is <clears throat> as the United States is forcing China to find their own solutions, we're actually starting to see in the technology world, we're actually starting to see a split in the tree of basically technology going into two different directions, right? There is going to start to be the, the Western, right? The American-centric way of doing information technology. And more and more, there is going to start to be in the Chinese-centric uh, uh, way of doing information technology. And I do think that's kind of fascinating to look at and think about like what, what does that mean, especially for a lot of my viewers, right? Uh, less than half of my viewers are actually American. Most of my viewers are from outside the United States. And so a big question that you have to ask yourself is when you're looking to deploy solutions as a non-American, as a non-Chinese person and as a non-American, right? What, what is your risk tolerance? What is your risk tolerance for, for purchasing and implementing uh, solutions uh, and who are you going to, to go with, right? When, when <clears throat> you have to deal with executives at a company, there's a lot of different things you have to think about, right? You have to think about the price, Price is important. Performance is important. Regulator, uh, regula uh, regulations are important. Uh, the ability to actually uh, purchase equipment is important. And this this isn't even uh, because of sanctions or anything else. This just might be there might not be a lot of that product, or you might uh, when you have to when you need a product, 
it might take a couple of weeks for you to get the product, right? There's a lot of those things that you have to think about. And so what's kind of interesting uh, with what's going on right now between the United States and China is we're starting to get this, uh, the, the tree is starting to divide. And so what will be curious to see is over the coming decade is how people in the rest of the world start deciding who they're going to be purchasing uh, their services from. And I get very concerned because I do feel, I genuinely feel uh, that China is building the systems for uh, 80 percent of the planet <clears throat> and uh, the United States is building systems for people that look like us. <laughs> and when you when you look at how industrialization goes, when you look at how uh, societies develop, I don't I don't feel uh, like that is the wisest uh, path to go. But anyways, uh, Alibaba stock experienced an, an increase of nearly 13% in trading on Friday. Uh, reports have emerged that Alibaba has created a new AI chip for its cloud computing division. While the new chip is not intended to comp compete with NVIDIA Hopper series of chips, much less the new Blackwell lineup, that's not the actual goal. The focus is on assuring Alibaba can secure a supply of AI semiconductors despite US export restrictions, while also enhancing the competitive competitiveness of its cloud business as AI and adoption continues to rise. And I think that's going to be an interesting thing, right? I bring up this whole idea of the CIO, CTO, and, and what their risk tolerance is. Basically, with will they be able to get their hands on the equipment that they need uh, into, in order to build out their, their infrastructure, right? And we've talked about this under both Biden and Trump, where they're trying, in order to prevent China from getting GPUs and other technology, they're actually cracking down on other countries, right? They're cracking down on the Middle East. They're cracking down on some European countries. They're cracking down on South America, right? South American com uh, uh, companies have to jump through extra hurdles to purchase equipment from the United States because the United States wants to prove that they're not going to turn around and sell it to China. But the problem is that that creates hurdles, right? That creates a regulatory burden. And so one of the questions that's going to come up for a lot of these, these technology businesses is, is can they handle that regulatory burden, right? If, if, if a Blackwell GPU from NVIDIA is what they really want, but because of regulations and everything else, it's a complete pain in the ass to get, they may start going to other products that are simply easier to access and then redesign uh, what it is that they're doing. It's an important thing to be thinking about as a technology professional is that we design our systems not simply based off of what our CEOs want, but also based off of the resources we have. Now, as I used to tell CEOs when I dealt with them, I can solve any problem you give me the resources to solve. You give me a blank checkbook and all the time in the world, and I will do whatever the fuck you want. You give me a set amount of money and a set amount of time, and we'll see what we can do with that set amount of money and set amount of time. But that's an important thing to be considering, right? There are so many technology professionals around the world, there's so many technology companies, and, and what you have to understand is they may want to use Blackwell in order to do X, Y, or Z, but if they don't feel comfortable in their access to Blackwell, they might start going, you know what, we can't get that, but we can get this other thing over here. So what, what can we do with that? Right? We had this idea, that's not gonna work. How can we pivot the idea we had to work with the equipment we can actually get our hands on? Um, let's see here. Uh, Alibaba's T-Heat unit uh, has been engaged in the development of AI kits for several years. In 2019, the company launched the Huanggong uh, 800, which was targeted at traditional machine learning models. However, with this new chip, Alibaba is delving deeper into the AI hardware competition, working with large language and diffusion models that are foundation of today's generative AI. The new chip is specifically designed for inference workloads. And so that's the interesting thing with here. So whenever you're dealing with AI uh, chips, GPUs, there's training, training requirements requires the most resources and there's inference using the models that training creates in order to, to actually get an output. Uh, so these are inference uh, processors, uh, they're not training processors. It is anticipated to be manufactured using a seven nanometer process, making it significantly more capable and versi versatile than the previous Wang Gong chip. Uh, early reports indicate it will concentrate on workloads uh, such as recommendation systems and natural language processing. Notably, the chip is rumored to be compatible with NVIDIA's software ecosystem, which may allow programmers to modify and reuse existing code. I do wonder what that actually means. Uh, so NVIDIA has this thing called CUDA. Uh, CUDA can only run on NVIDIA. Uh, there's, there, there either is or was a lawsuit about that for, uh, for 
you know, a monopoly or whatever. Uh, but anyways, there's CUDA out there. So it is kind of curious that they're saying that it can run with NVIDIA software ecosystem. Like, what does that actually mean? Can it actually run CUDA or can it run some other management stuff that NVIDIA has? Um, unlike NVIDIA, Alibaba is unlikely to sell its chips directly to users. Instead, it will leverage the hardware to enhance Alibaba Cloud, allowing customers to rent computational power. This approach could deepen customer dependency on Alibaba's ecosystem while aiding in the generation of recurring revenues. Uh, possessing both the hardware and the cloud platform also facilitates tighter integration, which could lead to efficiency improvements. Alibaba is supporting the strategy with financial backing, committing uh, approximately $53 billion towards AI infrastructure within the next three years. The company has substantial motivation for this. Its cloud division experienced a 26% year-on-year growth last quarter, and AI associated revenue has achieved triple-digit growth for eight consecutive quarters. So their cloud uh, business is going up, and their AI cloud business is going up, and so they're investing $53 billion. And now again, you think about this in China, right? So if it's in China, using Chinese produced hardware. Again, we talk about purchasing power parity, right? So things in China cost less than things in the United States. So spending $53 billion in China, who knows? Maybe that's the equivalent of spending $4 trillion in the United States. Don't think it's quite like that, but it is something to think about, right? So $53 billion, not on NVIDIA products, not on Samsung products, not on Western products, but if you invest $53 billion into homegrown Chinese products, uh, the amount that you get for that, the amount of resources that you get for that uh, might be uh, far more significant than you realize. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is, I don't know, another, another thing to follow as China tries to break the hold the United States has over AI. And I'll be curious to see uh, how this flushes out at the end of the day. And it also just shows that they are really putting a, a lot of effort uh, into hardware. I think that's one of the things like when you look at technology is to realize software is relatively easy. Uh, software is relatively um, resource light and relatively easy as far as it goes. Basically, you need a computer, you need a computer, you need your IDE, and you're able to code stuff. Again, you need other stuff, right? You need management, that thing, type of thing. But creating a de development company is relatively resource light. And so I think with a lot of the AI stuff, it's, it's very easy to think, okay, well, China is going to like just create models, right? Or China is just going to create these software products because that's, that's easy. Right, that's that's more low hanging fruit. Uh, but we're, what we're seeing is that they're actually producing uh, the hardware. And if they're at the seven nanometer now, I don't. Oh, I'm not. I'm not gamers nexus. I don't. I don't know the whole generations of of nanometers for chips. But I think seven nanometer is like 2015 era uh, in the Western world. So nanometer is the is what is it the size? It's like the size of the. Uh, the, like the transistor, like when they're they're laying everything out, it's like how small they can make everything on the chip, right? So now they're doing, I think, two nanometer. I think two nanometer uh, is the current latest and greatest thing. Uh, so if you look at seven nanometer, so like like fourteen nanometer. When you look at a uh, car, like uh, chips that go into cars, that kind of thing, they're like uh, fourteen nanometer, something like that, relatively large. So seven nanometer, as far as that process goes, I do believe that's about a ten-year-old process, as far as the Western world is concerned. Uh, and so it's interesting that it looks like uh, using uh, their Chinese manufacturing, they're able to produce at this seven nanometer level now. So you know, as you look at you know improvements and the rest of it, it does become an interesting question of how fast they can go from seven nanometer down and be relatively competitive uh, with the rest of the world, uh, especially as as we start hitting the uh, the barrier of the nanometers, right? Going from going from thirty nanometers to twenty five nanometers to fourteen nanometers are easy in a way. Again, if you actually read, there's something called the Chip Wars. There's a book called the Chip Wars. Read the book called The Chip Wars. It was great. But it talked about it. Like originally when they were creating these dyes uh, for these chips, they were literally able to draw these things. <laughs> they were able to draw these things and then using, oh, essentially using cameras, they were able to shrink, shrink that down in order to etch something on the silicon, right? And so, you know, going from something that you can draw to something smaller to something smaller can be relatively easy. The, the question is, is once we get down and, you know, again, that, 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 that two nanometer uh, for these, uh, these chip designs, how much further can you go, right? Do you do you hit a wall? And then what what happens if your technology hits a wall? 
if you're being competitive as the other person's technology slowly improves, right? The idea is they're improving, but you're improving. So even as they improve, you're continually improving in front of them. What happens if they're improving and at some point you just hit a technological wall, right? Because that just happens sometimes and then they keep improving and then all of a sudden, at some point, you're at parity. I don't know. These are, the, these are the things that I ponder. What do you think about this? What do you think about Alibaba coming out with a new AI chip for inference at the seven nanometer level? What do you think about this? them uh, simply using this for their own cloud infrastructure? Uh, again, to tie, to tie customers more in uh, to their particular systems, right? Once, once something goes legacy, it never goes back. Uh, put your thoughts down below. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs down. Call me amazing. Call me a moron. Just do it down below. As to, to a paraphrase, a very stupid comic book artist, if you don't like my politics, watch every single one of my videos. <laughs> Watch every single one of my videos and leave a comment in the video telling me how dumb I am. Again, I'm not, I'm not sure how, how comic book artists get paid. I, do, I have no idea how comic book artists get paid. I do know how I get paid. I get paid for views. So if you think I'm dumb, if you think I'm dumb, really, really, you, you, you have a duty, you have a duty to watch every piece of content I've ever created just to prove how stupid I am. Anyways, see y'all later.